connects are going through. Looks like we're good. Cool. Stabilize. We're going to be doing a reaction video today. They announced that Season of Discovery Classic WoW, and I'm like, I'm not going to lie, I'm interested. I'm interested in a server where there's no, no WoW token. Uh, where achievements actually mean something, armor, gear actually means something again. But then I heard some stuff about like a level 25 level cap, and I'm like, ugh. And seasons. Ugh. Ugh. Like thinking about it has made me go back to playing hardcore WoW. Speaking of which is what we're going to be doing after we watch this video. But uh, so, found a video, Classic WoW, Season of Discovery, Pros and Cons, by Stay Safe CTV. Um, never watched a video from this man before. No subscribe, no like. Just figured I should uh, watch something besides the act man, even though he makes some wonderful videos. So I figured we'll watch this video, see what we think about this Season of Discovery. And then... Move on to some hardcore World of Warcraft, because that is one game where everything you earn in that game is an achievement. And every level is an achievement. But anyways, so Classic WoW, Season of Discovery, pros and cons. What is up guys, Stay Safe here. So I wanted to sit down and try to pump out a quick video talking about my thoughts on the upcoming Season of Mastery Classic WoW servers that are coming out on <laughs> November 30th. I'm sure you Season all heard about that at BlizzCon a couple days ago, in which we will be playing what is effectively a modified version of Vanilla WoW or Classic WoW with a new rune-based talent system, new abilities, new spells, progressive level caps all along the way to level 60, starting at level 25. And then I think they said it'll be 40, 50, and 60 at most. Um, and also retrofitted raids with new mechanics. They're turning Black Fathom Deeps, the iconic classic WoW vanilla dungeon, into a 10-man raid at level 25, in addition to some new world PvP content. So I'd like to start things off by acknowledging that this is a very experimental way to approach classic WoW. And you have to give your hat, you have to take your hat off, figuratively. If I did that in real life, I would reveal my balding head. But you got to take your hat off and give it to the Classic WoW dev team. They're going out on a limb here. But a result of that is we've seen sort of two camps of people right now in regards to this Season of Discovery situation. Either you love it and you love, love, love it, or you hate it and you hate, hate, hate it. That seems to be... He, thought, he forgot about the third group, which I fall into, which is like, I don't know. Like, some of it sounds good. It sounds like some fun innovation, some new shit, 10-man Blackrock episode. All right, that sounds fun. Uh, the cap at 25, then 40, 50, 60. It could be okay. The runes and replace the talents. Not sure how I feel about that. Like it could be really, really cool. It could also be a steaming pile of shit. <clears throat> uh, Blizzard's done a lot of that lately, so. Hmm. Hmm. I don't feel about this be the case with what I've observed checking all different sorts of uh, all the far reaches of the internet. Speaking of which, if you take a look at the classic subreddit where a lot of classic WoW community discourse goes down, those people on the subreddit seem to unanimously love it. They're huge proponents of these changes. Whereas, if you look at the official Classic WoW, the Battle.net Classic WoW forums, people are pissed. They <laughs> hate it. And so, it is interesting observation, interesting to, to note that over here in this sort of echo chamber, I guess, everyone loves it. And over here in this alternative echo chamber, people are super angry about it and it's nonstop vitriol. But because I was curious, I took to Twitter to see how people felt. And so, I conducted a poll asking people how they feel about the upcoming Season of Discovery announcement, and here are the results. Still here, but I gotta kill my camera for just a second. I'm still here, though. Oh. Now we have over 3,800 people that voted in this Twitter poll I conducted. It was a 24-hour long sample size or 24-hour long poll, so people had an entire day to respond. 64.8 of the respondents said that they are excited for it, whereas 35.2%... I mean, I'm excited. We're going to try it. I'll be live streaming it. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to try it, for sure. Like, I'm in the 64.8%, I guess. ...of people that responded said that they are not excited. So it's almost 2 to 1 ratio, almost 2 to 1 odds. Um, but... Definitely, you can observe, it's not unanimous, it's two to one, 
Um, you know, more people are excited than not excited, but is it like 90-10 or 99-1? No, this is a little bit divisive, and there most certainly is a split in the Classic WoW community to some degree. Um, but it does seem like most people are optimistic at least, which is a good thing, especially these days. But now I want to sort of segue and give my perceived pros and cons in regards to the very controversial or perhaps divisive, definitely experimental season of discovery so we can start to sort of break things down. And I want to start off with the pros, the good things about season of discovery that, uh, maybe you're not, if you're super negative about it, maybe these are going to kind of change your mind. So <clears throat> I do think that between all of the new runic abilities and time-gated level caps, new metas will most certainly develop that we have never experienced before. If you think back to the classic, uh, the classic WoW beta, or maybe the demo that we got after BlizzCon, this is in 2019, um, there were some really cool metas, like there was a level 30 meta, a level 19 meta, a level 40 meta on the classic WoW beta in 2019 that we had never played before. Like who, whoever had twinked a character at level 30 or a level 40. And so there was some really cool emergent gameplay. People were sort of figuring out how to play the game in a way that has never really been done before, which is what we will be doing on Season of Discovery. Is that fun? Yeah, for some time it is but that's most certainly one of the pros. Talent specializations that have historically been terrible might have a chance at being viable. And so we're talking, what are we talking about? We're talking our Boomkins, we're talking our Ret Paladins, we're talking our Prot Paladins, maybe we're talking our Affliction Warlocks, we're most certainly talking about our Shadow Priests. Now these talent specializations, seeing, these sort of shadow specs, get a boost. as we have colloquially called them, now they stand a chance. And it's all speculation. No one really knows. Are warriors going to be good? Are shadow priests going to be the best class in the game? Are warlock tanks going to be awesome? Or are they going to be the worst tank actually and no one's going to bother playing them? We don't know. It's hard to tell just by looking at the, at the new runic abilities. You can't really parse that out just by reading, reading about it on paper. I think you need to kind of get your hands on it to figure out what's going to be good and what's not going to be good. And of course, Blizzard has said that there will be no PTR and there will be no beta for this because they want to sort of maintain some of the mystery or the mystique in regards to these servers. So this could be either a pretty good class balance or it could be the worst class balance of all time. But I mean, let's say it's bad yeah. class balance with all these new runic abilities once everyone is level 25 and they've acquired all their runes, that is. Was vanilla WoW balanced ever anyway? I think not. No. So, Warlocks, number one. It's like, well, are you really losing anything? It's just going to be unbalanced in a different way now, maybe at worst. So, okay, whatever. We'll give it a go. Um, between the retrofitted raids being introduced and the additional PvP systems, we do have some amount of new, never before played content. Who here can say that they've done 10 man? Black Fathom Deeps that they've that they've farmed their best in slot Black, Fathom, not Black, Black Fathom Deeps in the new retrofitted raid. I can't say that I have. So is that going to be fun? Probably a couple times. How long is that fun going to last? I don't know. We're going to talk about that in a minute. New PvP content. They're turning. I think I think from what I heard, it's supposed to be like thirty days. I'm, I'm so used to my camera being over like right over here, and I got the new monitor. No, you're up here. It's weird. I keep looking in the wrong directions, but uh. From what I understand, the new raids are going to be uh, the level caps only last for about like the first month or two. So it's not like we'll have to put up with the uh, Black Feather deeps for very long before we get to move on to like the level, new level 4D 10 man raid or whatever. Turning Ashen Veil vale into a PvP zone. When you're level 25, you can get a 50% speed mount and you can ride that around while you're PvPing in Ashen Veil vale exclusively. That's unique. I've never done that before. Maybe that's going to be fun. How repeatable is that fun? How long is that sense of fun going to last? I don't know. We'll talk about that. Also, Blizzard has come out and said that if Season of Discovery is successful, they might continue to create new content for Classic WoW. Okay. Mm. So they said that they're open to the idea. In fact, they even sort of wink, wink, nudge, nudged. I'd a little leak, I guess. Blizzard came out and kind of revealed that they're considering doing a No Muragon raid, a Scarlet Crusade raid, and a Karazhan Crypts raid, which everyone is super excited about. So those are the pros. Okay, this is but potentially could be some new uh, exciting content. Let's talk about the cons. Things like rogue tanks, mage healers, paladin DPSers... I these are very foreign enough. ideas in regards to Vanilla WoW. Uh, or at least the traditional Vanilla WoW experience. 
that many people have come to know and love over the last 19 or 20 years. Vanilla WoW came out 19 years ago. Oh my God, that means you and I are getting old. And so yeah, don't say these that. are sort of very foreign ideas in regards to how Vanilla WoW normally regularly plays. And it's possible that these ideas might end up or this new sort of gameplay approach in regards to Classic WoW might just be a little bit too foreign, a little bit too weird. It might deviate from what people know and love about Vanilla WoW. And people might try it out. Say, they say, ah, this is not Vanilla WoW as I love it. It's not for me. That could entirely happen. It might be too different. There might be too many changes, right? A mage healer, a rogue tank, a paladin that actually can do DPS. That's insane. That's insane. That's crazy business, okay? So who knows? Uh, I also am worried that if all the content that we're getting is, retro is, is a new retrofitted raid, sort of rehashed dungeons in a way, and some new world PvP content every couple months, we might end up running out of things to do really, really quickly, quickly, meaning the servers might die due to just lack of content. How fun is the level 25 PvP meta going to be? It could either be really fun and everyone loves it and it's the best thing ever, or I don't know, I've been there, I tried that, I did it for two days and now I'm bored and I want to go back to playing Hardcore WoW, or I want to go back to playing Classic Era, or I'm going to go log into my Drakthir and go do a Mythic Plus dungeon instead. That most certainly is not going to happen. But you get my point, okay? So I'm worried about a lack of content. Or... That's what I'm worried about. I, I don't know nobody, but I hear like a lot of hate for Dragonflight. I own it. I've never put very much time into any expansion past Wrath of the Lich King. Um, like I'm, I'm probably gonna play play on Cataclysm Classic. Like I actually need to level up over there. Uh, do all the do the end game content because I stopped playing after uh, Wrath of the Lich King. When I I stood in line to get Cataclysm, and I went to Fred Myers and got myself a game time card, and went home and fucking waited fucking two hundred million years for it to download. Got my time card all entered and ready to go. Account updated. And they dropped my video card. So Blizzard was just like, fuck you. And I never put I didn't play WoW again until I got this computer. And I was like, oh shit. Okay. Oh yeah. So I will admit I'm one of those like older people that lean, tend to lean towards the classic versions, but if they're gonna take the Wrath of the Shin Classic or like take that and walk it through all the expansions, I'd probably play that again. From what I understand, honestly, from watching a bunch of Asmongold videos, that's really my only source. So this information might be heavily biased and is. Uh, there are a lot of bad expansions, though, so there's something I could just leave out. Maybe I'll just figure out how to do it right. Anyways. I also <laughs> think that in regards to developer time, it seems, maybe I'm misunderstanding something, the... Classic WoW developers are spending time developing Black Fathom Deep's level 25 10 man raid that is only going to have a shelf life for two months or maybe two and a half months before they increase the level cap up to 40 and then to 50 and then to 50 uh, and then to 60. And then those, those raids, those new retrofitted raids that they spent time developing are now why would you ever go back and do them, right? You're not going to be farming them. You're not going to. And so I. Maybe I'm misunderstanding something like I said, but I'm questioning, is this a good way for the developers to be spending their time in regards to making new, fun, exciting content for Classic Plus? Or is this, is this a bad way to spend their developer time? And they always talk about how time is a resource and they have very limited developmental time in the Classic Quest Studio. So is making content that it is only going to be relevant for two months at most, is that a good way to spend that time? I don't know, I'm concerned about lack of content. If Season of Discovery's success Moving on, if Season of Discovery's success is the metric being used to determine whether or not Classic Plus content should be developed in the future, maybe things don't bode that well for Classic Plus. And the reason I say that is because considering how experimental and deviant Classic Discovery, Season of Discovery is going to be, I'm worried that if it's too experimental and it fails, then... Maybe the classic WoW developers are going to say, well, because no one really gave a crap about Season of Discovery. We released it. No one liked it. Now we have inferred that no one wants Classic Plus. If Classic... He has a valid point. This is what I think is going to happen. 
I think if they release it, whether or not it's good, it's going to have a huge influx of, car of players. And they're going to chase that high. So they'll keep pushing out the content. I don't think we got to worry about that. They're going to keep chasing that high. Uh, they do it constantly. Like, what are they doing with Diablo 4 right now? It's a huge influx of players. And then it's just fucking died. And it's slowly creeping its way back. Like, I have a level 83 balls. Lightning Ball Sorcerer, Sorcerer on uh, on the current season. It, it's fun, whatever. I just fucking I can't keep my attention for very long. But I, that's exactly what I think is going to happen. We'll see. I'm on video saying it, so we'll see if I'm right. The season of Discovery is to be their litmus test for the desire to play Classic Plus in the future. And so, I I will say. I don't really think that Season of Discovery is what a lot of people had in mind in regards to Classic Plus. Um, eh. Personally, I'm sort of on the fence about Season of Discovery. I'm going to play it. I'm going to give it a go. But I will be honest with you guys. When I think of Classic Plus, I think of some tasteful class rebalancing in the spirit of Vanilla WoW. And to little bit, be, be a little bit more articulate when I say that, I was not expecting Mage Healers. I was not expecting rogue tanks. I was not expecting paladins to have wind fury. Um, I was not expecting uh, warlocks to be taking raids or taking dungeons. These are a little. It's like it's like whoa. That's like a splash of cold water in your face. I'm not saying that I'm going to hate it, but it wasn't exactly what I was expecting when I'm talking about classic plus. Um, and so, like I said, a little bit of tasteful. Uh, class rebalancing or talent tree tuning in order to bring up some of those meme specs. I'm not saying in. in I'm not saying invent new meme specs. I'm saying <laughs> like maybe mage healer or something. I'm saying bring up some of the meme specs that were not really viable in original vanilla, original classic. Okay. That makes sense to me in my vanilla Andy, my classic Andy brain. Also new leveling zones, new leveling dungeons, new end game zones, new end game dungeons. I think that's a pretty good place to start. I think that's a pretty just like basic classic plus way to start. See if people like it or not. Give us a new level 30 to 40 leveling zone. Give us a new level 25 dungeon. Give us a new level 60 dungeon. Give us a new level 60 end game farming zone with maybe um, high density resources or or it's like a world PvP zone with high density resources. Or I, I don't know, right? I think those are all sort of low, low hanging fruits dangling off the tree of Classic Plus that mm -hmm. are big no brainers in my mind that I saw a lot of people talking about. And what the Classic Wild dev team was, they cut down that tree and they grew their own tree with rogue tanks and, and mage healers. And so, I don't know, that new tree might be awesome, but it most certainly was not a fruit being plucked from the tree that I was expecting. I can say that to be sincere. So way to put it. part of me does feel like the changes of Season of Discovery are sort of out of left field, like I've said. And of course, this is anecdotal, but I didn't really see anyone asking for any of the changes being introduced in Season of Discovery prior to its announcement at BlizzCon a couple days ago. So I'm sort of apprehensive. Of course I'm going to play it. Of course we're going to go hard. And I want to go into it with an open mind. I'm ready to have fun. I want to have fun. But... It's not what I was expecting. And I'd be lying if I said otherwise. So I really want to hear what you guys have to say about this. I'm very curious. This is a big conversation, right? Because the future of Season of Discovery, we know, is going to dictate the future of Classic Plus. Okay? That is what we've been told by the Classic Web Dev team. So please let me know what you think. Make yourself vocal and make yourself heard. Drop a comment, drop a like on the video, subscribe please while you're here, and go share the video with your friends so we can gather as much feedback as we possibly can. Thank you all for watching, and as always, stay safe. All right. So it was Classic Wild Season of Discovery, pros and cons. We need to kind of agree with a lot of what he says, like those of us who are asking for a Classic Plus, you know, that wasn't really kind of what we wanted. I don't know, we'll see though. Keep the fucking WoW token out of it. No WoW token. I keep pointing to the camera like it's over here. It's over there now. No fucking WoW token, Blizzard. No WoW token. Bad. Just... Yeah. Well, anyways. So, that's our uh, our video for the day. That was a good video. I'm gonna go ahead and give Stay Safe the uh, uh, TV, the subscribe, and the like on the video. Because uh, I enjoyed it. So... Go give Stay Safe TV a, a like and subscribe. It was a good video. You watched it with me. And uh, I'm going to...
Stop recording here for the video.